Hello and welcome back. Okay, so for the past week, I've been learning how to use Affinity Designer. Now, if you've ever heard of Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer is basically does the same thing, but it's a lot cheaper, a heck of a lot cheaper. Um, so in this last week, I've been having a go and doing different designs. So this is something I did. It's Raven on a Skull. Now, uh, these programs produce uh, vector drawings, and these are not bitmaps. You can basically zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and you don't lose any detail, you don't get any pixels. So it's great for print work and stuff. So anyway, I've been going through this, just learning this just for the sake of uh, seeing if you know, I can do anything with it and uh, see if I can um, expand my skills. Okay, so I thought it'd be fun to create, or recreate, should I say, the Spectrum logo from Captain Scarlet in Affinity Designer and see if I can uh, do a reasonable job of it. Okay, for reference purposes, we're going to use this uh, picture of the Spectrum logo we got off the internet. And we're going to create an A4 document in Affinity, which has all the basic settings. Really, the size of the document is irrelevant because what you're creating is a vector uh, image. So it doesn't really matter how big or small you start off with, you can just rescale it. Okay, so I'm just going to bring over the uh, Spectrum logo image into my document. So what's basically I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the vector uh, components, objects, over the image, build it up. Okay, so the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to create some rectangles. And these are going to form the basis of the black uh, strokes that go outwards from the center. So by centering the rectangles in the middle of the image, I can rotate them about the center. So I can line all my uh, black strokes nice and neatly and straight instead of relying on the image, which isn't actually circular, even though it's, uh, you'd think it would be. But uh, you can't trust everything you get off the internet. So basically what I've got here is a single black rectangle, which I'm going to make, uh, I think, 8 millimeters thick. Then I'm going to add uh, two white rectangles above and below it, which are separate objects. And the reason for that will become obvious a little bit in, a little bit as you go along. So the two white rectangles are half the width of the black one. As you may notice, this is matching what the logo contains. Now, having got the three bars together, I've now grouped them so they're like a, an object, like if you like, it's flying in formation. The three components can move around all together but they're still separate objects. And then what I'll do then is I'll triple these. So you can sort of see on the right there, I've, um, I've just added more of them. And then what I'll do is I'll start rotating them to align them up with the main strokes. Now I don't profess to be an artist or a designer uh, and I will make mistakes, but I will get a result. So let's see how we get on. So I'm just lining these strokes up now. Actually playing the opacity to help line them up better. Now I'm adding uh, donuts, which are a primitive shape, if you like, in the library on the toolbar on the left. And that enables me to do sort of uh, circular shapes so I can do the inner white ring and the two black circular rings as well. The main white ring around the outside will just be done as a shape but for a circle that fills the whole area. And so basically we put these shapes in and we'll line them up, get the thicknesses correct. And then we can start to do uh, Boolean operations with the stripes. Uh, Boolean operations are not as scary as it sounds. All it means is, is taking two shapes or many shapes, selecting them together, and then getting those shapes to subtract from each other or to add to each other, or just to cut each other up so you can then cut afterwards, then just cut out the bits that you want from a shape. And it's a way of making complex shapes from uh, simple, from very simple shapes. Thank you. 
So basically what I'll do is I'll select one of the diagonal black bars on its own, uh, and then I'll divide that, because there's one option there on the top right, um, with, say, one of the rings, and then select another black bar, divide that from another ring, and you can sort of see how the uh, the legs, the, the stripes, if you like, start to have chunks cut out of them where you can sort of selectively delete bits and bobs and you can also delete bits out of the circles to give us our shapes. Okay, so basically once the black bars have been used to cut the, uh, the rings up, we will then cut up some of the white elements of the bars, because they can be all selected separately and moved in and out, uh, and we can build up the shape of our Spectrum S. Now in doing this I did make a mistake, um, where I should, there was another part of the stroke at the top and bottom where I should have removed, but I just didn't, I don't know why I didn't, I didn't do it right, I was just too lost in the moment. Uh, so I have to fix that later, but you'll see me do it. Now whilst watching all this going on, you might think, well, wouldn't it just be easy to draw this? Um, and the fact of the matter is, is that when you become more skilled at this, people who do this sort of thing all the time, they can uh, go through hammer out designs very rapidly. But also these programs allow you to create uh, artboards. So you could create, uh, say, a Spectrum logo for your coffee cups, Spectrum logos for your SPVs, Spectrum logos for your Angel aircraft, Spectrum logos for the smoking lounge um, on Skybase or whatever, so it's it, on Cloudbase. Um, so it's actually very powerful and, they, and you know, it's, very, it's you know, a real sort of productivity tool. It's also a bit of fun to learn how these things work. Okay, you can sort of see here now I'm starting to select different elements and chop them up and resize, as you can see there, that, that white bit been resized. To bring them all within the range of the circle and, and deleting out the bits we don't need. Now, I do think the Spectrum logo is a great bit of 60s design, um, which is still recognisable even today. Even when I was doing this, my wife recognised it and said, Oh, are you allowed to do that? <laughs> which I thought was quite funny. But uh, it's amazing how many people know what it is, even now. Now, is there anything else that you do? Um, it's very easy to paint yourself into a corner when doing this, so you have to sort of plan what you're doing. Um, otherwise, you're just making extra work for yourself. Um, but it does, it does come along. It does come along. Okay, so hopefully you can see now that the uh, design's coming on. Spectrum logo is becoming more recognisable now. And you can sort of see how I was trying to build up the structure by using those basic shapes uh, in a simple way uh, to get the result that we needed. Okay, so at this point, I thought I'd finish my S, but I hadn't. That vertical bar I hadn't fixed, never mind. Um, so I thought then I'll, I'll start putting on the circles. Now 
Okay, so like in Photoshop or any other paint program, everything has an order. So depending on where your shape or layer is on the right hand side of the layer stack, up or down, it determines what appears in front of and behind. So what I've done now is I've positioned the white circle. Uh, basically all shapes have a fill, which is what this has been filled with white, uh, and a stroke. And the stroke is basically the outer edge of the shape. So your, sh your stroke can be like a pattern, hard line, whatever. Or you can have no stroke and just so it just becomes the fill of the shape, which is what I'm doing here. All right, and there will be little kinks in the design which we'll fix as we go along. So here I've made a copy of the reference image and the purpose of this is I'm going to use the copy of the reference image to allow me to sample the colours for the shapes I'm about to put down so everything's the right colour. So you can see me changing the position of the circle, make altering the circle size, and then I'm using the, uh, the alignment tools to get the circle to be centered with the other circle and the correct size. So basically I'll use the color picker tool, which is like, looks like an eyedropper on the left hand toolbar, and I'll use that to click somewhere on the reference picture to get the color. And as long as fill is selected, for the shape, it'll just straight away change that colour. So there you go, so that's a purple circle made there. Purple, mauve, magenta. Okay, so now I've added a blue circle using the same technique. And I'm just going to line that up with the purple one. And the, the lock doesn't seem to work for the positioning. That's the only thing I seem to that's thrown me so far using this. Okay, now we're going to add our next blue circle. See me sampling the colour. Okay, and then we'll position this circle and move on to the next one. And so basically just repeat this process now until we got all the way down to the red circle. Okay, we're getting there. Now, to do the gold infill, what I should really do is create a shape uh, to put the gold into. I, frankly, I, I'm tired. Um, and it was a bit warm today, so uh, I, what I did was I went over into the pixel persona, which basically lets you treat your images as uh, ordinary bitmaps, and paint a layer of gold in the black shape. Okay, once that was done, I then went and removed the errant uh, extra stroke we've got through the gold. And so I did that by basically just duplicating some of the shapes, moving them over, dividing them again to cut the shapes out and leave nice uh, edges. As though I'd never been there, the correct way of doing this would have been to have made a, a complete shape for the gold. But uh, we still got the result, you know, it looks pretty good. 
OK, so now we'll hide the background bitmap and we'll put a rectangle in of the right colour because obviously the bitmap uh, itself, because it's been enlarged, is really like blocky and pixely. And this will give us a nice smooth background. So I'll just select the rectangle. I'll leave that other shape up there so I can pinch its colour. I'll just draw out a nice big rectangle. It'll be, it'll be gold or whatever. And again, we just use the colour picker tool. Select it from the bitmap and the colour will change to the correct colour. Right, so that wasn't too hard, was it? <laughs> okay, so as you can see, we've now got our Vectorize Spectrum logo ready for the next uh, Spectrum marketing campaign. So anyway, if you thought that was interesting or not, um, I thought I'd share that with you. Um, so obviously, leave us a like if you want to. Um, subscribe, comment, and I'll speak to you in the next video. Okay, bye.